Hello and welcome back. This is Penny Santaveri and Amy Cornell. And this is the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. And we want to wish everybody, if you're listening stateside, a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, We are in the midst of turkey making and eating and all the things that come with um, this holiday. I, I, I love Christmas, Amy, but I love Thanksgiving, don't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I actually get more excited and I have more recipes saved for what to do with leftovers. Like it turns into like a mini project for me like, oh. every year. It's like, all right, let's see what we could do with these leftovers that, that actually makes, you know, finishing all the food worthwhile. So that's, that's a fun little challenge. <laughs> that's so fabulous. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, since we are, since Thanksgiving is a day all about gratitude and Turkey, obviously, um, we wanted to, I wanted to talk specifically about gratitude marketing. And this is kind of a, I mean, Amy, as you know, I'm such a huge fan of this topic um, because while I think it can seem a little sort of woo woo, you know, gratitude is really a huge part of being a successful author. And I'm not just talking about saying thank you. We're talking about appreciation marketing. So yes, reader gratitude, vendor gratitude, all of that. Um, but also not just this particular time of year, because when we talk about, you know, book marketing and all that's important, book marketing speaks at people, but gratitude and appreciation marketing speaks with people. Um, because one of the things that I feel like we've really lost in um, this in current climate is the high touch marketing. So in this episode, we're going to break down appreciation marketing and talk about some of the things that you can do for readers specifically um, also and for readers specifically, but also for the people you work with and for media and influencers, bloggers, et cetera, that you've been in contact this year. Yeah. And I think a great way to kick this off, Penny, is a reminder to everyone that Keeping the right perspective is so important when it comes to getting your book out there. And, and we, we talk, we say this a lot to people that reach out to us that talk about collaborating with us that, you know, books aren't typically very expensive in the big scheme of things. They're not a high ticket item. Um, and I think that's why a lot of authors truly get really frustrated when sales start lagging. They're like, why can't people just buy my book? <laughs> like, right. Right. And I totally get it. But instead of the price point, I remind authors, they need to think about what they're really asking for. And what you're actually asking for is their time. Like in most cases, many hours of their time, you know, and if you write nonfiction, you're also asking them not just for their time, but realistically, you're asking them to commit to some sort of follow through with your recommendations, making changes to the way they're currently living or working or, you know what I mean? So what you're asking of their time is huge. And honestly, Penny, my time is so much more valuable to me than say 20 bucks. So when I'm, you know, a a new book gets introduced to me, like somebody recommends it, or I get an email or something like that. I'm not thinking about whether or not I want to spend the money on it. The biggest deciding factor is if I will have the time to read it in the very near future. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, and it's a good, this is why it's a good time to remind everyone that, you know, timing also matters. So keep all these things in mind that, you know, you're asking for a lot of their time, but then this is a great time. This is a great, you know, um, reason for me to also interject that timing matters too. So when we talk about the frustration, why is nobody buying my book? You know, consistency matters. Uh, You know, maybe you land on a book page where I'm just overwhelmed with everything else going on in my life that I absolutely cannot buy a new book that day. I'm like, no, no more things. (laughs) But, you know, it could be a week later that I see the book again on an Amazon ad or something like that. And I'm in a better place mentally. I'm like, you know what? I should buy that book because it looks really good. (laughs) So, So timing matters. People's time is really important. And so keep that in mind when you're, you know, part of the gratitude marketing, part of the appreciation marketing, you are asking a lot of people when they invest in your book and it's more than just the money. Yeah, that's absolute. That is exactly right. Because, you know, we so often forget that. I mean, uh, uh, you know, time is this thing that we can't get back, right? Whether it's media, readers, vendors, all of it, all of it is really important. So, so, so let's dig into some of these because I just think this is such an important topic. Readers, absolutely very important. Um, but one of the maybe easiest things to check off your list is to acknowledge anyone who featured you this year. So 
maybe they did a review on your blog or if you had some media. And I'm a huge fan of handwritten notes. I love handwritten notes. I know it's kind of a lost art, um, but I love send. And, you know, just a quick note of thank you to anybody, to the blogger that featured your book, um, to the media person that interviewed you this year, anybody that you have access to that you could just grab a stack of notes and um, even a, a, a little bit of a fun tip is, you know, if you have them sort of branded to your book and send them a thank you note for the help that they gave you this year in marketing your book. Yeah, that help and that support. I mean, it's huge. Um, and, you know, the memorable part, like you said, it's, it's a lost art. So being memorable absolutely matters. And these are little small things, but they're super meaningful. And think about it. You, you are, you are, this is a working relationship that you are trying to establish with someone. And the best part, it's like a twofer (laughs) is that, you know, make an impact, be memorable, and you will get an opportunity later to reach back out to them. And I guarantee they're going to go, Oh, that was the person I got that nice note from. Or I remember they actually followed up with me and thanked me for doing that feature on their book. Those kind of things are not forgotten. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think that, you know, it's really about, you know, we spend, I mean, look at 99% of our time in this podcast is, is devoted to book marketing, but this is really appreciation marketing, right? Because, you know, it's one thing to pitch bloggers, but it's quite another to build a relationship with them. And you don't want to just hit up bloggers when you need something. I mean, make sure and acknowledge and thank them for their contribution to your success, which is just, which is so important. And I will guarantee you, as you build relationships with bloggers or media or whatever, and you take the time to thank them, they will remember you. Oh yeah, absolutely. And Penny, I know you've actually worked on uh, numerous campaigns with a lot of creative ideas that Mm -hmm. that I'll let you add in, but to that point, get creative, you know, get creative. Think of what you might be able to fit into a small flat rate box. It's not a massive investment. You know, maybe it's chocolates or another treat. Think local, you know, like this is definitely one of those times where everybody is hearing shop local now, right now, leading up to the holidays and everything. So that too with your your gratitude marketing and and what you can send to some of these people that really help bolster your exposure you know look at their website maybe you'll find a, a little hint into what they're into and then also it doesn't always have to be a thing either the things are really cool but if, if that's not something you're able to do you know supporting their platform is also huge i mean that should kind of be a given no matter what but but remember think about that especially this time of year are you following all those people on on their social accounts you know have you signed up for their newsletters have you shared some of their content um things like that really make a difference because these people are trying to get, gain exposure as well just like you are so reciprocating some of that is also a great way and free way you know to say to say thank you and that you appreciate them yeah, I think that's a real it's important to remember that. I mean, it really is. I mean, because look at we um we are not we blog on our website, but we're not necessarily quote unquote book bloggers where we're doing reviews, but we um always appreciate when somebody follows us and shares our stuff. And it does really, it absolutely really goes a long way. Um, and you know, these small tokens don't really have to cost a lot of money. Um but, you know, even the smallest thing is great for relationship building, because I think that like you think about your cover person who is tremendously helpful or your editor. We did a mini sode on, on editing recently um, or whoever you've worked with. It is it's so important to reach out and let them know that you appreciate what they did for you this year. Yeah. And the reality is we all naturally want to support and prioritize Mm -hmm. more importantly, people who we have a positive relationship with and gratitude is 100% at the top of that list for creating a positive working relationship. And even with what we do, you know, we are 10 times more likely to bend over backwards or to look for special opportunities or to share something with a client well beyond their campaign date when that person was had a positive working relationship with us, they had a great attitude. They let our team know that they appreciate their time and efforts. You know, it all, it sticks in your brain when that person's name comes up again or an email pops up, 
you know, it's, it really does, it does matter. So it seems like, oh, I don't have time for that, or they're not really going to remember me. They absolutely will. They absolutely will. They absolutely will. And Amy, you know this too, because I get media leads all the time. I have clients that we've worked with even three, four years ago that I send media, nonfiction specifically, because that's where the media lead kind of comes in, where I've sent media leads to, because I've thought of them. Part of being memorable isn't always you have a great book cover or you have a great campaign or you do something super unique. Part of it really is how you're showing up and expressing gratitude is, you know, is a big part of it. And it's not always intentional that we remember people um, who say please and thank you necessarily, but we do, you know, I had somebody one time tell me people will, for you, they, they were planning their wedding and they were talking about all this stuff and making all these crazy decisions about the food. And somebody said, they will always forget what you fed them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And so I think that that's part of the reason why gratitude is a great way to help leverage that, you know, that feel good feeling. And when it comes to readers, I mean, because obviously we could all use more readers, but reader gratitude can be all sorts of things. And um, I know we're going to run through some ideas on the show, but I think it's important to remember your readers with just a little something like offering, offering to send an autograph, autograph book plates to anyone who bought your book or even an ebook because readers really love these and you can get these book plates on Etsy and they're very inexpensive. Um, or by the same token, you could go to Etsy and have a Christmas ornament with your book cover on it, or even just a fun ornament of a reader, which I think is always, you know, which is equally awesome. And they don't cost you a lot. I mean, I think I had, um, I, I had an author who printed up, did the ornaments and they were, you know, they were like a couple bucks a piece. She did a few with them. So it's not, it's cool swag and it's not that inexpensive. It's not that expensive to do. Exactly. And everybody loves the surprise, you know, right. it doesn't have to be super like just as long. I mean, honestly, the unexpected quality of it like way outweighs what they're actually getting. <laughs> and we have decals now. Some of you have made that may have seen them already because I know they've been around on social right. and on the website and things like that. And they say, ask me about my book. You know, they can go on your laptop, your water bottle, on your car window. Anyway, anywhere you want to strike up a conversation about your book, which should be pretty much anywhere. Yeah. And they weren't crazy expensive, but they're they're so on brand for what we do. And people have really responded really well to them as well. So, you know, if you have a strong female lead with a knack for like great one-liners, turn that into a cool quote on a decal or something. Yeah. You know, if you write nonfiction and have a really strong or motivating slogan or tagline or anything like that, also like you can do so much with that. And Penny, you mentioned this earlier, branded notepads, you know, that you can keep on your desk or your fridge. Mm -hmm. I I always keep those. Every company that sends those to me, I always keep those. I probably don't need any more mailing labels until the day I die. But (laughs) but honestly, all the nonprofits that I support when they send those little notepads, I was like, yes, more notepads. I will take all the notepads, but custom bookmarks too on Etsy Mm -hmm. are really inexpensive, but you can add your branding, your slogan, you know, anything to it. And they're so meaningful and you're, there's still a piece of you there, but they're long lasting and they make such a huge impact because for the most part, readers don't have a bunch of personalized stuff from authors laying around. That's just not, you're still going to be in such a small percentage. Right. Exactly. And I think that it's worth mentioning here that, you know, gratitude marketing doesn't always have to be about sending readers something. Sometimes it is just about saying thank you when somebody shares your post or a post, you know, or a response when somebody sends you a uh, direct message on social, that kind of thing. Because, you know, you could also thank your readers, like when you hit a milestone, I've, I've known some authors that thank their readers for hitting a milestone of hundred or 200 reviews or something like that. So, it, so the swag is awesome. We love the swag. The bookmarks are always great. The stickers, I love the stickers. Um, and we actually also did tote bags, ask me about my book that I took to conferences that I've taken to conferences before. And people just love those, um, And we, you know, I give them away also as, as a thank you too. Yeah, they're so gratitude agreed. It doesn't always have to be something. The, some things are really fun to come up with, but 
equally as creative are content mm-hmm. that you create as well. You know, and it doesn't always have to be, and it actually shouldn't always be a direct promo for your book. Not every single time. Like we love double, double, you know, multitasking, like doing something fun for people and getting something out of it. Absolutely. Right. But sometimes just doing something for your readers. Um, Debbie McCormick did this really cool St. Patrick's Day Pinterest board for her fans with recommendations for recipes and kids activities and things like that. So it was unexpected. It was extra, it, you know, and it gives them a more personal look into who she is as a person. I mean, it totally fits the brand and everything, but it wasn't so in your face, like, here's my book, buy my book, you know? Right, right. (laughs) But these personal touches, like sharing content and sharing unexpected recommendations and things like that, that speak to who you are, can also be extremely valuable in turning just an everyday reader into an actual fan that has a vested interest in what you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, now you've inspired me because now I want to share some really cool reader centric gift ideas on our blog, too. I love looking at um, reader centric gifts like on Etsy and Amazon and things like that. Um, Cool gifts for the writer or the reader in your life, because that's also a fun, you know, you can do something like that, like the Pinterest board that Debbie Makeover did, or creating a gift list um, in particular around the holidays, because we are doing, this is a Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving centered podcast. Um, But in terms of reader engagement, You know, make sure that you share and thank all your readers when you hit other milestones too, like a bestseller flag on Amazon, which I just want to make mention. I've had an Amazon bestseller flag for five days now. I'm very excited. Um, Hopefully it'll still be up there for Thanksgiving (laughs) and then I'll be super thankful. I love my bestseller flag. But I mean, I think it's a really good opportunity to get out there, you know, use all of these small opportunities to thank readers throughout the year too. Right. Being grateful. That's a very good point, Penny, because the bestseller flag, you get it because people are responding. They're engaging with you. They're buying the book, things like that. So just remembering that all of those successes along the way came from somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, another thing, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to turn this off when I say this, are virtual events. (laughs) I know a lot of us don't love being on camera. I mean, there's a reason we do a podcast, right? And not a YouTube channel, but (laughs) right. (laughs) It's exactly right. But set that aside, you know, the anticipation truly is always 10 times worse than the execution when it comes to creating video. And I say that, um, you know, in support of Penny, because (laughs) we always have a lot of video ideas for her to do, but once she gets on there, they're always great. So it's just, you know what I mean? Prepping for it is always so much worse. And what you create is always so awesome. So in all seriousness, you know, maybe your fans are the type that would appreciate doing a fun cocktail hour with you. You know, you can share what you'll be drinking ahead of time so they can make it too, or they can be sharing what they're imbibing in super fun, or maybe a virtual, you know, book recommendation party is more in line with your readers, you know, especially if you're in a very tight knit genre. So having people come on, obviously you all love your books. So have inviting people to share other books that they're reading in the genre and try to introduce other people to other authors and other books. Um, recommendations are always a really great way to get involved with your readers and show that you, you care. That's kind of a next level element. I think always yeah. that, that a lot of authors overlook And, you know, these are very easy to do via Facebook or even Zoom, you know, if you don't want to do a social media thing. There's obviously now so many different ways to do video. That is that is one thing that came out of came out of the last year is how many different opportunities there are and how user friendly they are, too. Yeah. One of the things that I like to do on my Facebook page, too, is uh, invite readers to share, like you talked about, like the book recommendations and things like that is really involve readers and have them share, you know, um, book recommendations. Now, in my case, my readers are other authors. So a lot of times their book recommendations are, you know, their own book, which is kind of breaking the rules authors, but you know, it is a fun, it is a fun way to, to really involve the people who are, you know, part of your tribe. Um, and, and I, I think that you could also consider, all of this stuff can be combined with other writers. So collaborating on, let's say a fun gift bag that you sent to readers. I have, I've known authors to do gift bags to some of their, you know, most supportive readers. And the gift bags are actually a combination of several 
authors that maybe the reader has not read yet. And so they are able to get a, a taste of their book and maybe that reader can build, you know, get a new reader from it as well. Um, or maybe it's a reader exclusive contest that you do with other authors as a way of boosting the entries because now you're combining efforts with other authors and potentially their readers and mailing lists. But it is a great way to encourage, to involve um, other people to jump on this, this gratitude bandwagon, as it were. I love that. I love the idea of involving, getting other authors involved. Too. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly those kind of positive motivations and messages spread. Like everybody loves that on social, you know, it's like, we all appreciate it, but it's amazing how that one little spark of an idea and then everybody gets on board. And, you know, realistically, I mean, everything we've mentioned so far, is one, the willingness to get a little creative, obviously, but then your attitude, you know? So if you, if you keep top of mind that your path to success includes a lot of other people around you, you know, like you mentioned, Penny, all those people that help make the book happen in the first place, like your mm -hmm. cover designer, your editor, things like that. But then along the way too, your readers, the teams that you hire to help you get the book out there, it really makes such a huge difference in, in what you see as success as well. Yeah, it absolutely does because gratitude is great, but if you don't have the mental attitude to go along with it, it's really just hollow. And I, I know you mentioned about the mental stuff also being grateful for every opportunity that comes along. Like for example, at no point are you ever too good to be featured on a blog or do an interview or a podcast. And it's interesting that we've actually had authors who sometimes turn down opportunities and it always baffles me. So I think that the gratitude, yes, you want to thank people that have helped you. You want to thank media, bloggers, readers, et cetera, but also being grateful for the opportunities that are coming your way. Um, and again, not to get super woo woo, but it is Thanksgiving. When you, the thing that you focus on with gratitude magnifies in your life. And I am, I, I have this chalkboard in my kitchen and I always keep gratitude. I always keep refreshing my gratitude quotes up there. I'm a big, big, big fan of saying thank you. And I think with that, um, I want to wish everybody listening a very happy holiday season, but also to say thank you for listening. Thank you for your feedback. Um, because we love show ideas. We love, even if you just drop us a note and say, oh, I just found your podcast or I've been listening to you. Um, thank you all, because we would not keep doing this podcast without you and without your feedback and your show ideas. And we do need a lot of input, right, Amy? I mean, we need a lot of input. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> we, love, we love the show ideas because just like the blog, you know, we think of ideas like this is what we think people should know, yet we continue to be surprised and, uh, and grateful. Again, yeah. when people write us and say, you know what I've really been struggling with is this. And it's like, oh my gosh, that wasn't really on our radar. This is great. You know, it, it reminds us of what matters most to you all as well. And that's yeah. really important. Absolutely. That is definitely important. Thank you all so much for listening. This is Penny Sansbury and Amy Cornell. Very happy Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this on Thanksgiving, if you're not, we hope you're enjoying the leftovers. And we will, this is, this is the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.